All right, I thought we'd do, uh, we haven't touched on the meridians in a while. It's been sort of other things. And so coming back to one of the things that's really at the heart of this practice, which is Chinese medicine theory and the meridians. And we're gonna work the, the liver meridian. And so just to start with, before we do anything else, you could take your thumbs to the liver point three in each foot, which is if you trace your, trace, you can actually start with a pointer finger and take it just between your big toe and your second toe see here and trace the finger kind of press in a little bit and trace up until there's like a divot you feel right before you meet the bone and right between those two tendons all the way up in the back of that divot so it's about an inch or so maybe a little more than an inch from the webbing of the foot and you might find if you press on it it's a little tender it's kind of a sensitive spot sometimes, especially if there is something going on with the liver meridian. And so, you know, and by the way, we, I shouldn't even say liver so much because one of the, the tenets here of this practice too is that instead of saying like, you have a problem with your liver, which gets people really freaked out, right? And then they wanna go do a cleanse or something. <laughs> we talk about elements. And so let's talk about the wood elements. So the wood element is, you think about um, wood like bamboo, wood is springy. Wood wants to like shoot up out of the ground in the spring and go places and do things. And it's about new ideas. And it's about like the excitement maybe too of a new year. And then here we are, I don't know about you all, but my new year looks an awful lot like my last year so far, <laughs> right? Not much has changed. I'm still fighting with my kid about online school. So there's a feeling that, that I wonder if might be sort of in a little bit in all of us of like, I want to do things, right? We're stuck in our houses still. I want like, I want to, I want change or I, I want growth or, you know, just a feeling of like wanting to move outward and being a little bit like stuffed under the soil. And so that's kind of the energy of wood. And so we'll work on ways the, the wood element and the liver meridian are what helps it, it sort of moves the chi really evenly through our whole body. So what we can work on tonight is a feeling of like, like we always do really, but like gliding, balance, a sense of really spreading out softly so that there's not that like uh, feeling. And that uh, feeling, right? When you're pushed down, when you can't do what you want, when things aren't going the way that you want, what happens? Often we get angry, right? And so the emotion associated with wood is anger. But anger, and Chinese medicine, anger is not a bad thing. Anger is actually a mover. It's a good thing. And you can kind of like look at it and you go, oh, there it is. And once you look at it, it starts to transform and in that transformation, it moves you forward. You can turn anger into a vehicle that actually moves you forward and starts to create wisdom, it creates growth, but you've gotta witness it first. And so thumbs will go right into that point. That's called liver three, right up there in between your toes and just a little above. And you can just give a little bit of a massage on your feet, especially if you haven't given your feet some love lately. You could not even just do that point. You could do all around the feet. And so this, this meridian, it runs from the big toe, the inner, actually very inner corner of the big toe, all the way up through the inner legs, up through the groins and up into the liver. And it kind of does a little dance around the abdomen. And then it's paired with the gallbladder, which runs all the way down the side body. So that's where we're headed today. And so you can let go with the hands and just take a moment to arrive. You can bring your palms to rest on your thighs, or if you like, you could even place them over your heart or one on your heart and your belly and take a deep breath in. As you exhale, imagine just dropping down into your body. And it might take more than one of those to really get the feeling of landing. So big, wide, expansive opening breaths. And then as you exhale, imagine you just, your consciousness, your energy, your everything, just pour it down and into the tissues, the bones of you.
And then if you want to join me, you can also chant one ohm to start with. Breathing in. Oh. And then just telling yourself here that, you know, noticing whatever speed you've been operating at today, and just turn the dial down a little bit. Like if you know if you're, you're at your regular speed, we call that 100, turn it down to like 80. 70 or more if you want to you can just keep like down 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 but just reminding yourself that today that um this kind of energy wood energy it wants to push and go fast and so if you have any of that in you so we just work with it by by turning that dial down a little bit and trying to spread sensation throughout the we're going to work with a little breath movement to start with. I'm going to move my camera back so you can see. We're going to take the hands, and this comes from an acupuncturist, that you're going to take the hands straight out in front, almost like a, like a you know, zombie or sleepwalker or something, Frankenstein. And then um, I'll explain it first. You know what? Let your arms relax for a second. I'll explain it first. We're going to turn the palms in. And then one arm goes up and the other arm actually, and you might wanna be on your knees or sitting on a block so you have more rooms for your arms. One arm goes up and back and one arm goes down and back. And we're gonna look up and hold that breath in. And then as you exhale, bring it back and turn the palms down again. So, and then it'll go the other way, okay? So you can come to sit up, maybe sit on your shins or sit on a block, or you could sit on a block and sit simple cross-legged too, whatever supports you the best, but you want a little room for your arms to move. And then take them out, little sleepwalker arms. And then as you're ready to breathe in, turn the palms to face each other and inhaling, lift your right arm, let your left arm drift down and back and also lift your gaze. And when you get to the top of the breath, sip in a little more and hold the breath in. And whenever you're ready to exhale, you could bring the arms back to where they were. They slice through the sky and the palms turn down and then going right to the other side. So turning them towards each other, inhaling, left arm goes up, right arm goes down. You follow that top arm with your eyes and Sip the breath in and then hold it in at the top. And then when you're ready, you exhale and you bring them back. And we'll keep going like this, okay? And so you're reaching one up, one back. It's pretty simple. And you know what? If you're not sure, you can just watch me again. But you can also just move your arms and breathe and you're doing great. <laughs> We'll do just a couple more. This is starting to pull on the network of connective tissue that stimulates the liver meridian. You can imagine a million spider webs all crisscrossing over each other all throughout your entire inner universe. And as you lift one arm and lower the other, you're tugging on ends of those spider webs and the whole matrix moves. The whole matrix starts to light up. So when you think you're even, you can just let your arms drop. There's no hurry. Remember, we're still turning that speed dial down. But when you feel like, I think I'm even, uh, I think it would be the left arm going up would be the last one. <laughs> then you could let your arms drop. And then we'll do uh, one more little exercise for the meridian line. 
and it's just a simple tapping and it's standing. So coming to stand and you can take your feet just sort of happily apart. I'm sorry, I keep moving my camera. I hope that's not too distracting for you today, but standing up and you're gonna start where the liver meridian is, which is right here, sort of on the sides, just under the rib cage on the side body and your liver's on the right side. Doesn't matter, we're gonna do both sides though. And it, it goes from here down. And so we're gonna pat, and you can pat or you can kind of thump with your fists as you like. Patting, thumping, and going all the way down. So it goes down kind of the side of the torso, down through the inner groins, and then down the inner thighs. And you're gonna go all the way down to the big toe over that point that we massage. So you come over the foot, over that liver three point to the big toes. I mean, all the toes kind of get a good whack, don't they? <laughs> and then go back up and you're just thumping, thumping. And it's the same idea as the arm movements we just did of lighting up. My cats are looking at me like I'm crazy. Their ears are going out to either side. <laughs> lighting up that whole living matrix and in particular, just lighting up the whole line of energy that's in charge of spreading your chi, your vital life essence, spreading it out through your whole system. So we want to make sure that line is clean. Right? There's no uh, puddles of stagnation. There's no dysfunction. And then when you're ready, you can let that go and you can just come all the way up to stand for the dangle. So the dangle is where you just, is basically a yin forward fold, but we start really slowly. So you can start by letting your joints get a little soft as you stand. It takes maybe a little shake out, especially if you're like, you know, Ashtangi or something used to that kind of yoga. Sometimes you gotta tell your knees it's okay to bend and your shoulders it's okay to droop. And then start from the top down, let your chin drop. Think about a cinnamon roll or a fiddlehead fern that little slowly, we've got time here. We've got a good solid three minutes from beginning to end here. So maybe it takes a whole minute before you even roll down to the mid back. And there's no contest, you know, like for who gets there faster, or who gets there the latest. So don't worry about that. But just little by little and just being so available for every nuance of sensation, every layer of letting go that happens. How's your jaw? How's the skin around your eyes? How about your fingers? How about your belly? just dripping, yes, little by little. And at some point, you might come to whatever is your deepest point in this forward fold. If you wanna use props, you could put blocks under your hands or pillows. If you have a bolster, you could lean your head on it, or you could just hang out in space there. You could lean against a wall with your butt if you need a little more support. Ah, the great undoing, right? Be there for it. Feel gravity unpack your spine. Feel it draw your skull off the top vertebra of your spine. You can do any amount of wiggling, wobbling, you know, I always tell everyone that you could take the whole amount of time just to get into the pose. <laughs> but be conscious that every movement, it's not a distraction. It's not a, a wiggle just to get away from discomfort. But it's got purpose. One uh, symptom I read today in one of my books, a symptom of a liver imbalance or dysfunction, a wood imbalance or dysfunction, is that 
you sigh, big sighs a lot, which I did like a hundred times a day <laughs> lately. So that I thought that was interesting, but it might help here a big sigh, I think perhaps <sighs> to help yourself really surrender to the shape a bit more. You could breathe right down into your bone marrow and let your bones have a big sigh. So the counter shape for this one is the squat. So little by little, you could think about it first, even just imagine, picture yourself in a squat and then let the feet move apart as they need to. If you like blocks to sit on or any support pillows stacked up to sit on, you could grab one and you could lower your seat down. And you know, you could also sit on the edge of a chair or a sofa too, if the floor feels far away. As you come into your squat, you can decide, what do I wanna do with my head? I like to bring the hands to prayer, tuck the elbows inside the knees and drop the head onto the thumbs and give a good massage to that whole forehead area. Nice reminder to sort of get out of the forehead, out of the forehead and down into the heart. But if there are other ways you want to approach this, you could put your arms down and your head just dropped. Or you could find an arch in your spine. Can you live here in this body as it is right now, in this moment, carrying joy even in the midst of everything that's happening? more breaths here if you want to change where your head is you might do that or you could keep it the same So to release this one, I invite you to explore what your body might ask you to do here. It can be nice to come back to the dangle for a moment, to just lift up into a standing forward fold for a bit. You might want to just plop down on the ground, maybe even a downward dog. There's no you know, rule that says you can't do a downward dog in yin. <laughs> might be just nice to come to your seat. big part of this practice is the in-between moments and practicing interoception, really looking in, listening in, and feeling in for what will best serve you so that eventually the teacher becomes almost unnecessary, dare I say it. <laughs>
So we're really going to head into the groin and the inner thigh area a little more for the next one, which will be a half tadpole with the option for the second half if you wanted to go into a frog you could do that and so this one could perhaps be tender on the knees so you might want to have blankets or pillows ready in case your knees need a little bit of support so basically it's a child's pose with the knees very wide and very could mean whatever you want it to mean right everyone's definition of very is different Really, you're just going to that point where you first feel it, that's all. And then you're considering what's best. Do I stay or do I kind of reach in one more layer? So child's pose, head facing down, belly facing down, big toes could be touching or not, but the knees are open apart and the belly can soften down between the thighs towards the earth. And if you wanna put anything like bolster or pillows under your belly chest for support, that's always okay. And give yourself time in the beginning to adjust if you need to. You mentioned last week the idea of the suggestion of stillness, but it never being a mandate. As you come into the shape, I love this acronym by Joan Halifax, GRACE, G-R-A-C-E, as a meditation practice. The G being to gather your, intention, your attention. Take a deep breath and on the exhale, drop back into your body. And the R of grace is recall your intention. Remember why you're here. And let that be a resource food for you. Be resourced by your altruistic intention. And the A is attune. Tune to yourself, take a moment. Notice what's happening inside your body right now. Any sensation, whatever feelings are present. You're not trying to shift anything, but just allowing the noticing to actually do the work. C of grace is for consider, consider what really serves you here, what's constructive, what's truthful and what's kind. And the E is for engage, not like squeeze your muscles, engage like engage with the shape, be so present and there for every nuance of sensation, every ripple of feeling, thought, emotion. So if you wanna take it to a frog, you would start to move the feet apart, knowing that that's challenging, right? will cause more sensation. So if more sensation would be too much, don't worry about that part. If you wanna grab extra support, a bolster or pillow under your chest for this one, you could do that. And you're always allowed to come back. Decisions are not final here.
even in this awkward shape, could you find some surrender? One more layer of letting go. In the midst of everything, to be gentle. In the midst of the weirdest time of our lives, to carry joy. To be soft. To slow down. greatest care and appreciation for this body and acknowledgement that you just placed some stress on your tissues. Just start to collect yourself back in, gather the knees and the feet back in and ask again, what needs to be moved? What needs to be felt? What needs to be rested? might come to a child's pose or yeah cat cow is a nice idea sit or lie down Coexisting with any sensations inside you. Coexisting with any emotions. Like, yep, we can all live here in this room. I love, I've been so into Joan Halifax lately, I can't stop listening to old podcasts of hers. And she says this really great thing little simple mantra. She says, not being in denial, not excluding, but also not being sticky. And to notice if you're adhesive, where that might be, body, mind, heart, they're all the same, really. So let's take, um, we'll work a little more on the side lines of the body coming into a, a half dragonfly but we'll add a little bit of arm movement and what I saw someone call the other day, Cleopatra, which I thought was very cool. So we'll do half dragonfly with a little Cleopatra. So one leg out to the side, any leg, doesn't matter. We're gonna do them both. And there's a little bit of movement to start with. And so you could take whatever leg is out to the side, that hand, cross it to the other leg somewhere, wherever it fits most happily, it might be the knee, if you hold on to the shin or the ankle or the back of the thigh, anything at all. And a few times you're going to imagine with the other hand, like almost like you've got a big, soft, sweet, fluffy cloud in your hand. And you're going to carry the cloud up and overhead with the most soft, lovely fingers. And when you reach the end, flip the palm, turn the palm to face up, and then push the cloud back away go back to where you were. And we'll do that to say like five times. Scoop up the cloud, pick it up, carry it overhead, all that soft sweetness over you. And then put the palm to face up and push it. Imagine even the molecules of the cloud through your fingers, what that would feel like. A few more times like that. can just release and come to sit. So I like to have a block, sorry, I should have said that first, a block nearby. If you've got 
some pillows you could lean on, that would be good too. But to put it somewhere, and we'll adjust it as we go, on the inside of that long leg knee. And that'll be for the elbow. And you can lean on that and just hold on to your head. And then your other arm is gonna come up and dangle over, kind of over and behind your head like a hat. But this doesn't work for all arms and it may not work, you know, it might work for a while and then you have to let it go. So know that with that top arm, you might also wrap it behind your back, rest it on your leg, bring that one as well over, you know, anything at all really. You can find your own way. But the initial suggestion, the invitation is perhaps a draped arm somewhere around the head, over the head. And so I find that with this bottom arm, if it's too close to me, I can't really relax. I often have to move it a little further away than I think so that I can really let the weight of the head drop into the elbow on the block. So if you need to play with where that block is, please do. Again, even in this awkward, we're, we're doing some awkward ones today, <laughs> more than usual. So it's a good invitation to find some sweetness in the weirdness. This one isn't terribly long. We'll just stay here another half a minute or so. Yeah, I can't resist a pet the animal moment either when I'm practicing. <laughs> yeah. So whatever you notice that you feel just imagine yourself like just this open vessel and nothing sticky, not adhesive at all. And it moves through the feeling, the thought, the emotion, and it doesn't stick. So we'll, we'll stay with the same leg situation, but you can vary, side bends can be really intense, so you can really carefully help yourself up and again just always being there for that after pose so if you need a little movement before we're going to turn and take a, a half butterfly so same leg situation we'll just fold over that long leg but i invite you if you need a few moments to just like wiggle around or today what i was doing was kind of almost coming up like a little bit of a a bridge sometimes after a side bend it feels really nice to sort of pull things into center and sort of gather things in towards the a, a sort of power at the midline. So it might be nice to do a little bit of a hip lift or something like that. And then you could eventually start to turn towards that long leg. If you need to remind yourself to loosen up, you could give a little shake anywhere, a little pat if you want to go back to that liver meridian line just as a reminder to kind of loosen up you do that and then eventually a rounded spine and a fold over that long leg any props you want to bring you could have blocks for your head stacked up as high as you like a bolster on top of the leg or nothing at all mm. Take the time that you need to get it just right, to find that Goldilocks spot. And then you could gather, right? Come back to grace. Gather your attention. Breathe in and as you breathe out, anchor 
yourself and your body drop down. And attune. So in the spirit of wood, the wood element, I wanted to tell you just a little story about a, a Zen Buddhist monk who had a center in Tokyo and also a center in Kyoto and um, was at the one in Kyoto and there was a big storm, a really violent storm and a lot of the trees got ripped apart torn from their roots, branches torn off. And so after the storm subsided, the monk went and, you know, as monks do, they take care of things, swept and picked up all the branches that had been torn from the tree, giant branches, you know, just totally um, ripped right off, right from the, the base and piled them all up, you know, as we do with like, branches and things, pushed them up against the side of the building out of the way around a corner. And then after a couple of days left to go back to Tokyo. And he came back in the spring to teach again and was really surprised to walk around the corner of the building and see those branches still there, but they were all blossoming completely separate from their roots, completely torn apart in a storm. And there they were, blossoms springing out. And he said, sometimes this is like us, our world and our life, torn from the very root of our situation. But maybe it's for us to understand that even though we might be torn from our life, our friends, that the energy of awakening, the presence of the blossom is there within those broken branches. Think about breathing in and as you breathe out, imagine your chi, your vital essence, spreading out from the center to your edges. Breathing in, draw it into your center. Breathing out, spread it from the core to the periphery. And you might notice anywhere that feels sharp, anywhere that feels tough or compressed, I'm not compressed, a lot of it's compressed right now, more like sticky is the word. And just noticing does a lot, that's all. Just let the, the attention do the work.
The liver chi also is said to control the tendons and the ligaments. And so you might take a few breaths here, imagining all those sinewy, ropey places that connect the bones and the muscles. And soak them with your breath. Imagine them gliding a little softer against each other, floating in your body instead of rigidly existing. Imagine them just floating in the sea inside you. That's plenty in that one. Come on up. Slowly, remember, keep turning that speed dial down. A little slower than you want to, and I invite you to either find your own moment of washing away, or if you like, you could do the windshield wipers, which we all know is my favorite. And the same way that we did this for the arms for the liver meridian, this windshield wipers does that for all the meridians basically <laughs> it's like just a big pulling on that whole crystalline wildly alive bioelectric pulsing matrix inside you so any amount of that you know all of these hold times on these shapes are just suggestions so if you need more, you need less, that's fine. But we can come to the other side of the half dragonfly to start with doing that, um, the other arm crosses over and then you're scooping your clouds, scooping just like feather fingers, flipping the palm to face up through the clouds you go. Just so graceful. Noticing the quality of touch of the hand that's on your leg. Could that be full strong, but also really tender and soft, and gentle and strong at the same time? One more of those. Gather, if you like, the block for your elbow. You can gather your block. You can fidget around until you find just the right place for your body this evening in this Cleopatra's hat. Take enough time that you can really find a place that's sustainable. And if your arm truly does not enjoy being there, that is a-okay. <laughs> you don't have to enjoy that. You can change it. But I can't tell you what to do because I'm not in your body. So you've got to listen to your own body's cues. And start to float up really slow motion. Feel all the feels. Move a little bit as you like, move a lot. We're gonna head into the half butterfly. So you're gonna turn towards the long leg and fold over it, but there's no rush to get there. 
You can find as much movement as you need to here. As you find your place, you meet that first layer of sensation. Stay on the good side of the edge, <laughs> not going beyond. And then we just invite, invite all the layers of softening that might happen. Happen, you might check in with the belly. There's so many layers of letting go in the belly. So maybe just one layer peels back. Bring some attention to the hands and the feet. The quality of tenderness there. To the throat. In the spirit of wood, there's one more story in the form of a poem. It's Mary Oliver, and it's one I've come back to again and again. And suddenly right now, in this moment we're in, it seems especially poignant. So it's called Hurricane. It didn't behave like anything you had ever imagined. The wind tore at the trees. The rain fell for days, slant and hard, the back of the hand to everything. I watched the trees bow and their leaves fall and crawl back into the earth as though that was that. This was one hurricane I lived through. The other one was of a different sort and lasted longer. Then I felt my own leaves giving up and falling the back of the hand to everything. But listen now what happened to the actual trees. Toward the end of that summer, they pushed new leaves from their stubbed limbs. It was the wrong season, yes, but they couldn't stop. They looked like telephone poles and didn't care. After the leaves came blossoms. For some things, there are no wrong seasons which is what I dream of for us.
start to come back now, calmly and slowly. You could windshield wiper again. You could sit quietly. You could do any other movement. I feel like that went by really fast tonight. <laughs> We're at the end, so we'll head into Shavasana, but you got some time here, so if there is more that your body needs to let all that kind of wash away, go for it. You could gather extra clothes or any snuggly things to have near you, on you or under you. Allowing a few moments here, you've got some time for deep body rest. Let your bones rest. Imagine that bone breath again that you breathe right down into your living, feeling very much alive, sparkling electric bones right into the bone marrow. And as you exhale, your bones sigh, they exhale too. With each exhale, you could imagine the muscle loosening off the bones, the bones loosening their grip on the muscle. With each exhale, you could imagine the bones loosening from each other. The spaces between the bones are like oceans. The bones just floating in the oceans inside of you. Please feel welcome to stay longer if you like. Otherwise, it can be a, a little rock of the head just to start waking up the body's bioelectricity, turning on that whole living matrix again. A little wiggle of the fingers. Let the body tell you how it wants to move.
take your time if you're coming back up to sit you could come to sit well and tall imagining your spine like a coiling plume of incense smoke rising up out of the bowl of your pelvis you could bring your hands to heart or belly or let them rest on your thighs and just feeling one last moment to really gather and drop in gather your attention breathing in as you exhale dropping down and in and remembering what this feels like so that you can come back to it when you need to i'll chant om if you want to join me from home you're always welcome to of course breathing in oh Thank you so much.